U.S. Army, the grandson of a flag designer, and the President of the Confederate States of America were responsible for roving bands of wild camels in the desert southwest that we're pretty sure have died off. I'm guessing you want an explanation. Ah, the United States Camel Corps. It began as an idea brought forth by Major George Crossman in 1836 to aid soldiers, but it pretty much was ignored. However, after the Mexican-American War and the addition of quite a bit of territory, much of which was desert, Crossman mentioned his idea to Major Henry Wayne. And Wayne took the idea to a senator from Mississippi, Jefferson Davis. Yes, future president of the Confederate States of America, Jefferson Davis. Wayne conducted a study on the subject and recommended the importation of camels, and Davis agreed with him but didn't get much traction in Congress. But in 1853, old Jeffy became Secretary of War under President Franklin Pierce, and two issues arose that were both answered with camels. The first issue was U.S. troops operating in the desert southwest not doing that great with horses and asking for better pack animals. And then we have the railroad. See, before the first Transcontinental Railroad was built, there was a plan for a southern version that went through Texas and the desert southwest, except the only way to do this was to buy a smallish piece of land from Mexico. The Gadsden Purchase, overseen by James Gadsden, and if that name sounds familiar, it's because his grandfather, Christopher Gadsden, is credited with designing the Gadsden flag. You know, the don't tread on me one. We paid about 10 million, or roughly 230 million in today's money, and truth be told, Santa Ana knew it was better to get rid of the territory and at least gain a profit rather than deal with the area which was full of hostile forces and have the U.S. eventually just take it from them. And if they're building a railroad through the desert, you're probably going to want some camels. By the way, they did eventually build this railroad. It was the Southern Pacific and was completed in the 1880s without camels. So in 1855, Congress approved $30,000, or about 830 grand in today's money, for the creation of the United States Camel Corps. And so they were off, and by they I mean Wayne and Lieutenant David Porter, and they went to procure camels, taking two trips in order to build a herd of 70 camels that they brought together at Camp Verde, Texas. By the way, there are single hump camels and double hump camels. Bactrian camels have two, Arabian, Somali, or dromedary if you want to be a dick about it, camels have one. For the most part here we're talking about Arabians, as there were only a few of the Bactrians and supposedly a couple of crossbreeds. In 1857, we got a bright, shiny new President James Buchanan and a bright, shiny new Secretary of War John Floyd. And because of this, Wayne was reassigned and Captain Ennis Palmer was picked for his replacement. The Corps was ordered to conduct tests to determine if the camels would be of good use and ran a test run through San Antonio and ended in California. The 25 camels sent performing way better than expected and they were considered to each be worth four mules. A recommendation was sent to Congress for the purchase of a thousand more, and it was promptly ignored. So, yeah, you know, no more camels for you. Yeah, that's a dated reference. The remaining camels back in Texas were used on a few reconnaissance missions to the Rio Grande, testing the camel's durability, which greatly surpassed the mules, both in area traveled and being able to survive without water. So what happened to the Corps? Well, the Civil War happened, and the Corps was pretty much forgotten about. Since it had been spearheaded originally by Jefferson Davis, and you know, he kind of became president of the folks the U.S. were at war with, the Corps was disbanded during the war, and by 1866, the camels had all been auctioned off by the Army or had escaped into the wild. And there were reports of wild camels roaming the desert in Arizona up until 1891. Could they still be out there? Probably not, but if I know anything as a wrestling fan, it's never say never. Oh, and one of the camels was killed by another camel and its carcass sent back to Washington, D.C. It's now on display in the Smithsonian if you want to check it out. Just putting that out there. Also, I just wanted to point out that during this entire video, I didn't make a single camel toe joke. That was really hard for me. Yay, maturity. Maturity. 